For decades, we've been promised that we can harness the power of the sun with nuclear fusion, a clean, safe, and unlimited energy source. Now, all that investment may finally be paying off. Scientists at California's Lawrence Livermore National Lab report that for the first time, they're going to be able, they've, they've made a connection here. Jeffrey Kluger is science editor for Time Magazine. Jeffrey, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about what's happened here. First of all, how big a breakthrough are we talking about here, Jeffrey? It's a really big breakthrough. And as we report on Time.com this week, they have crossed a threshold moment. They've achieved a fusion reaction in which you get more energy out than you put in. That's the threshold for any successful energy generating system. So they've managed to do this. Now, the energy was fleeting. It could, it's, you're, it's certainly not ready to power Los Angeles, but it's a proof of principle thing, much like the Wright brothers flying. Once the Wright brothers showed you could uh, build an aircraft that was capable of heavier than air flight, you knew you were off and, and running. And this is something they've been trying to do for decades. We've been trying to do this for 50 years, and I've never been able to cross this, re this threshold. The idea is nuclear fusion is very different from fission, which breaks atoms apart. Nuclear fusion works the way the sun works. You have hydrogen, you compress it into to helium and it releases energy in the process. The sun doesn't need our help to do that. It's got 27 million uh, degrees of temperature there that does it. We need artificial ways of heating and compressing hydrogen to do this. As you were speaking, we were showing people at home images of lasers, but that's what they've been using for 50 years, more than 50 years. So what was different? What did they change in all of this to produce it? Well, the lasers actually, it, one of the things they've been using for 50 years is, is magnetism, compressed gas with magnetism. In this facility, it's an amazing question of scale here. You have a facility the size of a football field with 192 lasers pointing at a fuel pellet the size of a peppercorn. And what it did was heat that up to 150 million times the pressure you and I experience sitting on this, just standing on the street. That compressed, the technical term is squishing, that squished the hydrogen down into helium and boom, released energy in the process. The potential for this, Jeffrey, is, I mean, for what it could mean in terms of energy for the, for the world is, is years down the road. But, but, right. but there's a lot of competition to make this work, isn't there? Right. Right, and that's the problem, and this is where we get into American politics again. China is in this in a big way. France, South Korea, Russia, they're all in it in a big way. We built this facility for $5.3 billion, which is either a little or a lot, depending how you compare it to the budget, and it's budgeted at only $330 million a year. That also is small compared right. to the federal budget. But we're having budgetary fights about this again and again and again, year after year. To do this right, it takes a sort of monomaniacal focus on saying, we're going to keep at it until we make this work. China's doing that. Russia's doing that. If we do it, we can stay in this game. It's a man on the moon kind of thing. It is a man on the moon kind of thing. And that's somewhat of an overwrought metaphor. Everyone always says, well, if we got men on the moon, then, you know, right. we can do this. But the fact is, it's very apt here. Because in that case also, in 1960, we said we're going to do it and nothing's going to dissuade us. We have to have that, that level of resolution now. You know, nuclear fusion isn't really normal breakfast conversation. <laughs> but this has a lot of practical application. So if they are able to harness it in a, a bigger quantity, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, what can we actually see? What would change? Well, there a lot of things would change. The military would be very excited about it. We have nuclear fission battleships right now that produce too much radioactivity. Fusion could be, you could have portable fusion reactors. It could also become part of that all of the above mix we talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, some still have some coal plants. Uh, have fusion plants, have fission plants, have wind, solar, hydrothermal. Once you get all of this going in this great mix of different energy sources, you wean us away from fossil fuels and get us to a clean energy sustainable How future. How far away, Jeffrey, do you really think it is? Oh, thousands of years. <laughs> no, not that long. It, it, we're still decades away from effective nuclear fusion. But the fact that we've done this. This is the point. What we're looking for is ignition, a system under which this would be a self-sustaining process that could actually take a load of fuel and burn for several days and give us what we need. It's a complex topic, but you're the only man who could break it down so well. <laughs> Jeffrey Kluger, thank you. Thank you.